Welcome back to Book Break. It is time for our January book haul. If you haven't seen one of these before, every month we do these publishing house book hauls here on Book Break. We look back at the month that has just finished and some of the most exciting books that we published that month. The content of these videos is always a little bit of a surprise to me. Elle, who is the other half of the Book Break team, sends me a mystery email every month with information about some of the books that she's chosen to highlight that we published this month. And so let's open up this email and work through it together. First up in here we have, ooh, The City of Tears by Kate Moss. This is the paperback release. This one is book number two in the Burning Chambers series, which is Kate Moss's sweeping historical fiction series. It started with book number one, The Burning Chambers, and these books are gonna span over 300 years of history and loads of different places. So, so far this series has taken us from France to Amsterdam. The series contains love and war and is this big epic adventure. So everything that Kate Moss is beloved for. Next, a non-fiction book, In Defense of Witches. This is a feminist non-fiction book by Mona Chollet, all about the history of witches and witch trials, and then the lasting effects of that into present day, the ways that modern women still have some of these same charges leveled against them in different ways. Throughout history, women who chose to lead different lives than the ones expected of them have not been historically treated kindly. So this book is a sort of passionate argument as to why women should be able to choose different independent lives for themselves. Then we have Luster out in paperback. So this book was absolutely huge when it came out in hardback, Luster by Raven Leilani. This is about a young woman called Edie who gets herself into this very messy situation. So she starts dating an older man. She is a young black woman. He is a white man who is in a semi-open relationship with his wife. They are a white couple who have an adopted black daughter. And so Edie becomes quite an important figure in the daughter's life, but the whole situation is very complicated. There is a movie coming, Tessa Thompson is adapting it. So make sure you pick this one up. Now it's out in paperback. And then another paperback release, How to Save a Life by Eva Carter. This is a book, again, that I read last year in hardback, and it is very moving. So this is a story that begins in 2000, right on New Year's Eve as it turns 2000, and we follow three teenagers who are all at this party, and then one of them, his heart stops beating. And it is up to the other two teenagers who are training to be doctors to save his life. From that night, the book then goes through the decades and looks at how this event affected all of the different characters in different ways. And it covers some pretty heavy topics, but it's also about their relationships over the years and how they come in and out of each other's lives. It's very moving. Then we have a new MCL. You always get very excited about these. Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. So this is a really, really famous memoir written by an ex-slave. The book follows his life, born into slavery, and then eventually how he managed to escape. And it's this really important book that played a big part in the abolition movement. We have a cute children's book, Tiger at the Beach. What's inside here? Ooh, the book has googly eyes. I wanna play with that and a sliding mechanism to bring the tiger to life. So this is to help children learn their first summer holiday words. I wanna learn my first summer holiday words. The Christie Affair by Nina de Garant. Do I need to talk about this one again? You've heard me talk about this book so many times and I'm not planning to stop anytime soon. I thought this book was so much fun. So just in case this is the first video of mine you've ever stumbled across and so somehow you haven't heard me talk about this before, this is a fictionalization of the disappearance of Agatha Christie. So that is a true story. Agatha Christie went missing for 11 days. To this day, nobody knows what happened to her in that time. So this book imagines a story for her. But that's just one of three storylines we have going on. We also go into the backstory of our narrator, who is not Agatha Christie. Our narrator is Agatha Christie's husband's mistress, and she has this very emotional backstory. And then storyline number three is a murder mystery written in the style of an Agatha Christie novel, and they all fit together. It's so much fun. Then Write It All Down by Kathy Rensenbrink. This is a book that I'm really excited to have a look at. So this is a guide to writing your own memoir, getting your life down on the page. It's got loads of advice in here from Kathy Rensenbrink and from other writers like Dolly Alderton, Adam Kay, Candice Carty Williams, and it's all about overcoming loads of the hurdles that might stand in your way, worrying about 
getting started writing, if that's not something that you do very often, worrying that no one will care what you have to say. The book has got exercise in it and it's got reflections and it will really show you the joy and satisfaction that can be found in telling your own story. Then another paperback release, The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. So I read this one when it first came out in hardback and it was one of my favourite books of last year. So I really, really recommend revisiting this one. Now the paperback is out. This is a collection of short stories, or rather it is short stories plus a novella, which is called The Office of Historical Corrections. And they are all linked thematically. So they are all about the rewriting of history in different ways and the ways that we can go back and correct history, or the ways in which some people do erase and change history, and who has the power to tell those stories. I loved every single story in here, could not recommend more. Then there is Love Signs, Linda Goodman's Love Signs. I feel like I've been talking about this book quite a lot recently as well. So this one is perfect for astrology fans. It's actually this classic astrology book from the 70s that has now been re-released in a new edition. It's gorgeous, love this cover. So this is your guide to how to unlock your true love match by looking in the stars. The book will give you little insights into your own dating personality based on your star sign and also the ways in which you might interact romantically with people from other star signs. Oh, I really want to read this one, Hair House by Sally Hinchcliffe. I've heard this described as a modern ghost story, a modern witch hunt story. Very excited. It's about a woman who moves to Scotland in mysterious circumstances and ends up staying on the grounds of this remote estate and soon hysteria sets in in the community. It sounds claustrophobic, it sounds eerie, it sounds really wintry. I actually want to be reading it right now. I'm gonna order it right after this video. But next, A Time Outside This Time. This is another one I'm very interested in by Amitava Kumar. So this is a novel that is all about memory and politics and truth versus fiction. The way that you've heard people say we live in this post-truth era, this is a novel that really tackles that. It's got some great author quotes here. So Jenny Offal describes it as a brilliant, expansive account of one man's attempt to follow his moral compass through a maze of disinformation and discord. Sounds great. And also Alexander Hemon describes it as a courageous book, incredibly relevant for the present moment and crucial for imagining a better future. Well, wouldn't we all like to imagine that? From the future, we go to the past, we go back into nostalgia. Dear Zoo by Rod Campbell is now 40 years old. Everyone who remembers this book from being a child, put a lion emoji in the comments below. This one holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. And then, oh, another book that holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts, but in a very different way. A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara is one of the most emotionally upsetting and moving and wonderful books that I have ever read. It's also incredibly famous and incredibly beloved on booktube and booktok. You definitely will have heard of this book. We now have a brand new edition of it. You may have seen this cover image before. It was previously the American cover, so it's kind of the one that I've seen the most online, a lot of American readers showing it off. And now we have a new edition using that same picture. So this is your sign that if you haven't read it yet, it's time to do that now. And I can guess what the next book in here is going to be. And I am correct. It is another book by the same author, Hanya Yanagihara. This is her new book, To Paradise. So this book is very, very different from A Little Life. The only similarity being they're both very long books. So that's great. It gives you a lot to dive into through this long, dark month that we're in. To Paradise is really interesting because it's divided into three separate books that are linked the way that they're linked is kind of open to interpretation, I would say. I actually did a vlog on this channel of me reading the whole book, so I will link to that below. Go and click and watch that so you can follow me on the roller coaster of reading this book. Another fun children's book, London, The Queen's Jubilee. Ooh, this is a sticker activity book. So if you didn't know, this year the Queen is going to become the first British monarch to ever celebrate Platinum Jubilee. 70 years on the throne. That's an incredibly long time. So this is a fun book for children. They can use stickers to decorate a Jubilee street party. And of course when I say children, I mean people of any age because I will probably be using these stickers as well. And then we have one more in here. Ooh, The New Lily King, Five Tuesdays in Winter. This is such a beautiful cover. So this is a short story collection from Lily King, who is the author of Writers and Lovers, a book that I really, really loved. 
This one, Five Chooses in Winter, is a collection for the first time ever of Lily King's 10 of her best short stories. And they're all very different from each other, but all united by being in some way on the theme of love. So let me know in the comments below which books you've hauled this month, which books you're most excited to pick up. I will link here to that vlog that I mentioned of me reading To Paradise, and I will also link to a playlist of all of our other book haul videos so you can go back and browse through them all. And I'll see you next time.